Good afternoon. We are gathered together this afternoon in the presence of God to uh, remember and celebrate the life of Marilyn Kirkpatrick, uh, who went home to be with her Lord on April 11th. Uh, I'm Father Dan Tootin, I'm the rector here at Hope in the Desert, and I'll be officiating uh, this service today. Um, we're going to, going to be starting uh, a, a little differently uh, from our typical liturgy, in that uh, many of you may know that um, that Marilyn uh, was a member of Chi Omega sorority. And uh, the Chi Omega sorority, would, uh, her sisters would like to uh, do a, a brief memorial service uh, in the style of which they're accustomed. And so I invite uh, Sherry Miller and I believe Amy up to, uh, there's more than one Amy here, I think. <laughs> Come on up. I feel a little explanation is in order. Not only were Marilyn and I sisters in Christ here at Hope in the Desert, but we are also sisters of the Pi Gamma chapter of Chi Omega sorority. Jim, I'm honored to be doing this today. This service is designed to honor the memory of our founders, national officers, and other members who have entered the, the Omega chapter. Sisters in Chi Omega, we are gathered here today to honor the, more, the memory of Marilyn Louise Kirkpatrick, who has been called to the Omega chapter. Silently, let us remember her contribution to our beloved sisterhood. Okay. The story of the Good Samaritan is an important part of Chi Omega's ritual and history. I will now read Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at that place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him, and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence and gave them to the host and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now of these three, thinkest thou, was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise. Let us pray, O Eternal Father, God of all comfort, remembering thy promises, we offer up our prayer unto thee. In thy wisdom, thou hast seen fit to take from us a sister and a friend, to put an end to all her earthly labors, and to bestow upon her the inestimable gift of immortality. Grant her, O gracious Lord, thy favor and blessing, and to us give such humility and faith that we, living righteously according to thy commandments, may in the Omega chapter meet and know Sister Kirkpatrick in thy heavenly kingdom. I now declare our memorial service completed. May the Lord bless you and keep you all the days of your lives. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able. Okay. 
I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though he die. And everyone who has life and has committed himself to me in faith shall not die forever. As for me, I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. After my awaking, he will raise me up, and in my body I shall see God. I myself shall see, and my eyes behold him who is my friend and not a stranger. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Happy from now on are those who die in the Lord. So it is, says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light, Grant that your servant Marilyn, being raised with him, may know the strength of his presence and rejoice in his eternal glory, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Most merciful God, whose wisdom is beyond our understanding, deal graciously with the family and friends of Marilyn in their grief. Surround them with your love, that they may not be overwhelmed by their loss but have confidence in your goodness and strength to meet the days to come. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for him. You may be seated. The first lesson is from Isaiah, 
chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. If indeed when we have taken it off, we will not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan under our burden, because we wish not to be unclothed, but to be further clothed, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident. Even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are far from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 23. Let us read the psalm together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. By the grace of God, I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I remember very clearly the very first time I ever met Marilyn Kirkpatrick. At first it was a meeting without words, but words were not necessary. It was, it was uh, before this church that you're sitting in was built, and we were still meeting a few blocks away over at Desert Ridge Middle School. And I had noticed a, a new couple in attendance, as we pastors and priests often do. And what struck me is that when, when Jim and Marilyn came up for communion, those amazing blue eyes of hers were flooded with tears. I knew, and I was very grateful, that she'd been touched by the Lord in our, in our little service. Not long afterward, Jim and Marilyn became members of Hope and served this church in many ways. Now, I generally make it a point to meet with the loved ones of those who pass from this life so as to be as familiar as I can with their history and their, their faith and their life. And when I met a couple of weeks ago with uh, Jim and their daughter Amy, Jim and Marilyn's daughter Amy, what I heard from them didn't surprise me but delighted me nonetheless as they described beautifully the person I've known for these 14 or so years. Marilyn Carey, was, uh, she grew up in a, a suburb of Chicago where her family ran Carey's Custard Shop in the city of LaGrange. And she grew into adulthood um, and, and uh, she attended Monticello College and then UNM. And it was at UNM there where she met uh, a talented UNM baseball player by the name of Jim Kirkpatrick on a blind date. And I am told by more than one source that it was love at first sight. And anyone unwise enough to roll their eyes at this notion will be hushed by the fact that Jim and Marilyn were subsequently married for almost 60 love-filled years. And anyone who, who might assume that Marilyn was simply kind of like a, a leave-it-to-beaver, stay-at-home mom may also be surprised. Her family was her primary focus, but she was described by her daughter, by Amy, as, as a, an absolutely extraordinary and independent woman. Just a, a smattering of, the, of her activities through the years includes active membership, as, we, as you've seen in the Chi Omega sorority, the Enchanted Mesa and Valley Forge chapters of the Sweet Adeline's vocal group, 
And I'm told a fiercely competitive member of the Chi Omega and Tanawan Neighborhood Bridge Clubs. Marilyn was, a, was an exceptionally talented artist. Homes from the East Coast to the West Coast still display the beautiful and tasteful fruits of her palate, which she was always generous to share. Amy informs me that her mom's eye for beauty spilled over into a personality that was beautiful in and of itself and, and spilled over into her whole attitude toward life. And anybody who knew her would be very quick to agree with that observation. Marilyn was a sunny optimist with a big, big heart. One of my favorite uh, freeze frame memories of her is of her generous and good-natured banter with our homeless clientele um, as she was serving the lunch line at the Rock at Noonday. The folks there just absolutely loved her, and for good reason. Jim described her as, as always cheerful and a loving friend with a great smile, and said that when beginning a conversation, she made people feel comfortable right from the get-go. When I interview family members, I often ask the question of what they think their departed loved one would see as her greatest accomplishment in life. And without missing a beat, Amy answered, raising her family. Marilyn was very proud of their son, Eric, and daughter, Amy, both of whom we are honored to have with us this afternoon. Jim says that Marilyn's faith was constant and it was deep. She had no doubt about God and about God's kingdom. And having herself experienced uh, an actual healing during our prayer time, she strongly supported Hope's healing prayer ministries as well. Her faith sustained her during her final battle with cancer. She personified Paul's words in his second letter to the Corinthians, which we just heard, where he writes, we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. And Paul describes the glory a couple of verses later as he says, For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And then he says something that's really uh, so familiar, it's all too easy to overlook, but is both profound and absolutely essential to our peace and to our hope. He says simply, we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. This, of course, is true for those who are suffering and who are deeply and viscerally challenged by the mystery of human suffering. But it is just as true for those of us who endure the suffering of our loved ones and are left with the inevitable hollowness of grief when they pass into the arms of our loving Lord. We walk by faith, not by sight. Because just like Mary Magdalene, who at first had trouble recognizing Jesus after his resurrection, our eyes may be blinded by tears of grief, through which it may be hard to see how close our Lord actually is to us. For whether we see him or not, he's there walking with us every step, comforting us, fully understanding and sympathizing with our doubts and fears, because he experienced all of these himself in his tumultuous time on this earth. He doubted and feared in Gethsemane. And in that one terrible moment on the cross, when he fully experienced the, the loneliness and the alienation of humanity, the connection with his Father in heaven was broken, and he cried out, My God, my God, why have you forgotten me? The Lord knows, understands, and comforts our pain. But he does so much more than that. 
anticipating the emotional upheaval that his own death would, uh, would bring uh, on the disciples. And in response to the oblivious shadow of fear in their hearts, Jesus comforted them with the words we just heard in our gospel reading. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Have any more comforting words ever been spoken before or since? If so, I haven't heard them. Here Jesus is confirming that, as, as our prayer book says, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Now, eternal life in and of itself may not be the most enviable state of, uh, of our continued existence. <laughs> but the promise doesn't end here. Because for the price of our faith and trust in the Lord and his promises, our eternal life will be in the full presence of our creator and his son, our redeemer. We will never again be left alone. We'll never again be left bereft. We will be united with the Lord and all of our loved ones in Christ in what has, has variably been described as an eternal feast, a golden city of unimaginable beauty, a beauty which I believe Marilyn saw hints of in her artwork in her heart, and a place where suffering is a memory receding eventually into nothingness, disappearing in our rearview mirror. The vision of this place is captured by the prophet Isaiah, from whom we heard a few minutes ago in our, in our first reading. He writes, And the Lord will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord will, God will wipe away from the, te from the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. I believe that at this very moment, Marilyn is enjoying this place where dreams and promises have been fulfilled in a reality more tangible and luminous than anything we've ever witnessed or even hoped for or dreamed of on this earth. You and I have the time allotted to us in this life, pending that day when we'll be united with our loved ones in the full and loving presence of God. May we use it with the same eye for beauty, the same delight in discovery, and the same heart of service that our sister Marilyn modeled for us. Amen. At this time, I would like to invite anyone who would care to share an anecdote or a memory or a tribute uh, to come forward and, and speak into the microphone up here at the lectern. For those that don't know me, I'm Eric Kirkpatrick. I'm uh, Marilyn's son, and she might have talked to me, talked about me a time or two, and Amy, and, and the grandkids. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming here. Uh, Marilyn Louise Kirkpatrick was obviously a loving wife for dad, a m loving mother for Amy and I, grandmother, great-grandmother, teacher, artist, musician, entertainer, gardener, fierce, fierce bridge and golf player, <clears throat> and the most gracious of individuals. She brightened a room just by entering and unleashing her smile. With a simple touch and her careful listening, she could even make the most stoic of us relax and open up. There are so many stories of mom's art gracing the homes and lives across the country and likely other countries. Her art spanned paint, 
stained and etched glass, clay, metal, wood, really any medium that you can imagine. And uh, as, as uh, Allison reminded us last night, even on Christmas sugar cookies. Uh, her art and soul shone through her, in her music, singing with Sweet Adelines and you know, multiple quartets. Um, that was when I was first dating my wife. I brought her up to um, Albuquerque to meet the family. And uh, mom and Amy had conspired. Mom was in a Sweet Adelines presentation. She was the MC, and, and she, had, she was the main singer in one number. And uh, so Amy conspired and got me to sit on the aisle, because you know, Eric, it's got more leg room for you. So I sat there, and, and uh, Mom's song was about a you know, summer-winter relationship, younger man, older woman, and came over and was singing and sat on my lap, and you know, it was really very playful, and it was fun, and, and it, it really made Trish uh, see that fun side of her. It was, it was just a moment that I'll never forget. Uh, Mom could also help others with her insightful love and care. My brother-in-law, Fred, was sharing a story with me where he was having a problem with somebody and was talking with her about it. Mom said something to him that he's tried to live by, worse lived by ever since. She told him, uh, there's a lot of ways to live your life. Who's to say mine is perfect or even the right way? That's really touching words by her. Um, in the, over the past several years, Amy and Mom had the opportunity to walk a lot. They walked around the academy often and through Tanawan. Um, and Amy was regularly struck by Mom's faith in God and her, uh, the depth of her caring for everyone. She would hear of somebody's problems and quietly, privately, Pray for their well-being and the fulfillment of God's will in their lives. It's entirely likely that Mom prayed for every single person in this in this uh, church right now, and there are so many more that will never know that she prayed over them. It's just so very touching. Mom loved us with all of her heart, but her grandchildren were a whole other level. Mom made meaningful gifts that they still cherish, uh, matching overalls for the girls when they were younger, uh, flower vases, ornaments, Santa Pello bowl holders, several paintings of them, Boomer playing football. Uh, she even made a rocking horse and a teepee for the girls when they were younger. So many things for the kids to love and remember her by. Uh, it's just always been so touching, and, and she, her heart has been so wonderful, and she's always been such a creative person, and it's inspired so many to be as creative. I know Boomer now is, is trying to create new things and is doing very well, and, and part of his inspiration has been Mom. So, you know, we know only Lord Jesus was made perfect, but for Dad... She was the perfect wife. For Amy and I, she was the perfect mother. For Madison, Ellison, and Boomer, Crystal, Corinne, my daughters who are, are in Florida, she was the perfect grandmother. And I know for TJ and Luke, her great grandsons, she would have been a perfect great grandmother as well. I want to thank you all for coming here and being with us to celebrate her life. Thank you.
Good mm -hmm. afternoon. My name is Howie Tischler. I'm uh, one of the founding members of this congregation and also building project manager for the church structure in which you are sitting this afternoon. I have two things I like to say about Marilyn. Uh, the first is that she just brought, wherever she was, pure joy. I had the privilege of being with Marilyn and Jim at um, what we call in our congregation um, Suppers for Eight. And uh, during the Suppers for Eight year that I was privileged to dine with Marilyn and Jim, um, we went around to the various homes and every time that Marilyn um, uh, came into the room, as Eric said, uh, she just lit up the place and God bless her. The second thing I'd like to say is that she had a very active prayer life in this uh, congregation. And in the back of this worship space, which we call the nave, there is uh, a prayer station. And, uh, and you will notice it as you exit. Uh, Marilyn was a regular attendee uh, at the Wednesday morning prayer sessions that we call our intercessors. And she did the most beautiful praying during these sessions of intercession um, that one could possibly hear. So she blessed so many people through her prayers, and we give thanksgiving for that. Thank you, Jim, and thank you, Marilyn. Is there anyone else who would care to share? I'm Steve Carey. I'm a, my father was um, Marilyn's brother. He was the oldest of the family. So, of course, I'm her nephew. Um, I've known Marilyn all my life, and as Eric said and everybody else has said, wonderful woman. I mean, she walks into a room, completely lights it up with her smile. She just could not, not like this woman. Um, <laughs> my wife, Susie, had never met her before. We got married in 2018 and invited Jim and Marilyn and the rest of the family and they RSVP'd saying they couldn't make it. And then we were there for the wedding and you know, um, getting ready for the reception and who walks in? Jim and Marilyn. We're like, you guys couldn't make it. And Susie's like, oh no, what are we gonna do? We don't have a seat for him. We don't know if we have the food for him and everything. And then Marilyn walks over and talks to Susie and she's like, I can't be mad at her. <laughs> First time I met her, I love this woman. She's just amazing. And as far as artwork, I still have a um, little figurine she made me from when I was a kid. And uh, <laughs> she made these towels for my daughter, uh, who's 19, little rabbit and a little duck, um, you know, just pink and blue or yellow. And we're still using for our, our two youngest. Um, I have a 10-month-old and an almost three-year-old and they're still using them as well. And so she has touched our lives very deeply and continues to do so even beyond. So, thank you.
Before we continue, I'd like to remind everyone that you're all cordially invited by, by, by the family to um, a, a light reception after the service. Um, as you're leaving, you, you go through the, uh, the, the greeting line there and to the left, that's where the food is, and you're welcome to make, be seated inside or outside, whichever you prefer. I invite you to stand as we join our voices as believers around the world and through the ages in reaffirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to remain standing for our hymn, How Great Thou Art.
You may be seated for the prayer. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. For our sister Marilyn, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Marilyn and dry the tears of those who weep. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister to the joys of heaven. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Marilyn, who is reborn by water and the Holy Spirit and holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. You only are immortal the creator and maker of mankind, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Marilyn. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a shield of a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.